Good. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, you just watch my bun do the whole video. <laughs> Yes. All right, my friends, it is 9.01, so we will get started. I'll do a quick introduction. Obviously, I'm also speaking to the phone as it's recording. There's a lot, probably about another 90 men and women who are doing this challenge are not going to be present right now. So if you see me looking over there, that's why I'm doing that. You guys are always welcome to ask questions. So quick introduction. I think I've met everybody in this room probably at least at one point. If we haven't, I'm John Bartholomew. My wife and I own Long Ferry Wellness. This is our 10th year in business. And we have developed a phenomenal facility and we run these challenges about two to three times a year. The key reason why we do this is because of the education piece. Men and women for a long time have kind of been given the short end of the stick and haven't necessarily been taught what they should be doing or been shown an easy, simple way to do it frequently enough where, where it becomes a habit routine. So every three to four months, we'd like to do them, to do them with our members. They can also help if maybe things have gone a little sideways for you. Maybe things have gotten a little out of control. Maybe COVID-19 has disrupted your entire life, your schedule, and it's been chaos and chaotic. The other side of that is maybe things have been going really well. And this is just, you're throwing gas in the fire. You're, you're putting your foot on the gas pedal and you're hammering forward. And it's just another reason to keep things going, right? So we usually do three a year uh, and we always try to improve them. The fact that we're running it virtual, the fact that we've got different ways to go about it is making it different and unique from time to pass. Why are you doing this? That's a million dollar question, right? You need to kind of think and say, okay, what is making me want to sign up for this? And there's really no wrong answer. Maybe it's, hey, I want to be an amazing role model for my children. Maybe it's, hey, I've never been shown this. I don't understand how to do this. Maybe there's a health reason. Maybe I just want to drop 10 pounds. Maybe you want to win a free membership or a free lifetime membership. That's pretty awesome, right? So there's really no wrong answer to why you are doing it, but keep that in the back of your head. Write it down somewhere. Default back to it so that way you know why am I doing this, right? I told you why we do it. Our goal is to educate you, to make sure you guys have the tools to be successful, not just during these six weeks, but for me, anybody, Pam, if you remember when we worked together, mm -hmm. my goal is when I work with somebody, either individual or collectively, is in 10 or 15 years to bump into them and have them say, the things you helped me learn, the things you helped me implement in my life as a habit have stuck with me for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. To me, that is success, right? So this is a six week block of time that we're gonna work together on these things, but nothing would make me happier to bump into you six months from now, six years from now, and you say, oh, this thing that you taught me, that one video really hit home. And that's, that's happened, and that, that is so rewarding for me when that happens. So why, we know why we're doing it, you guys should know why you're doing it. And I highly recommend, like I say, you know, having it in the back of your head, but write it down somewhere. Write it down, have it somewhere where you can see it. As always, guys, if you have questions, please ask. You don't have to, um, you know, don't be shy, don't save it to the end. And the other thing, what was I gonna say here? Um, virtually, if you guys have questions, post them below in the comments. We will have a Facebook group for anybody that wants to join into the Facebook group, and that will be a great resource where you can ask questions. If you have a question and you don't feel comfortable asking in front of 100 complete strangers, there's this little unique feature where you just send me a message and you say, hey John, I had this question and I didn't want to let 99 of my newest friends know what it was. So you can shoot me that question. All right, any questions so far? Can I just add a little bit? Of course. Having worked with John, um, especially on the nutrition piece of things, um, I have to tell you, I had bariatric surgery in November. I had a vertical sleeve gastrectomy and the addition of the intermittent fasting, not only do I feel amazing and have a lot of energy, but it's really helped me break through my next plateau. And he teaches you more than just about nutrition. It's about mindset too. So I now do a journal. I read every day. There's things that I wasn't doing before that I do now that have really impacted my relationships with people as well. So it's a full circle of, of help. Thank you, Pam. The check is in the mail. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but Appreciate it. For those of you that have, those of you that have known, known me and known our business, we rebranded three years ago, right? We started as Cross from Law Valley 10 years ago and it was just work out, which is part of it. It is part of it. But over time you start realizing there's more to it, right? The example I always use is 
you could be in phenomenal shape. You could be jackal, you could be phenomenal, right? But if the other areas of your life are just really lagging, really, really far behind, as in our, our mental health, our sleep, these other things, we're really not, we're not doing the best that we can. So you will see that through my videos, through the content that I provide that yes, a lot of the focus will be on nutrition, but there are other areas that we want to approach and understand that will make us happier and healthier for many, many years to come. So winners, how do we pick the winners? After this, anybody that wants to weigh in today, you are absolutely welcome to do so. If you want to get out of here and go enjoy the Sunday, that's fine too. You can also weigh in anytime tomorrow from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m., Tuesday, 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. So you don't have to do it today, but you do need to weigh in, right? We do need to have the metrics so that we can pick that. What we do is we look at your overall starting weight, right? Overall starting weight. And then at the end, we look at a positive change in body composition. We define a positive change in body composition as decreased body fat and increased muscle mass, right? So the in body can show us that. If we think of health, decreasing body fat definitely improves health. Maintaining or increasing muscle mass improves health, right? So we want you guys to be healthier. What we then do is we say, okay, what percentage change was that? So if Pam and I were partners, and we looked and said, John has lost six pounds of muscle and he's gained two pounds, I'm sorry, other way, he's lost six pounds of fat and gained two pounds of muscle. We basically have a calculation, we make a percentage. So John had a 8% positive change in his body composition. And Pam, the reason why I picked her as a partner because she's a studette and she has a 16% positive improvement in body composition. Our combined total is a 24% improved body composition. And then we'll go through the teams and say, okay, who had the largest combined improvement of overall body composition, right? So that's how we pick the winners. In order for you to be eligible, you need to do your entry weigh-in today, tomorrow, or Tuesday. You need to do your final. I would recommend doing a midway point, but you don't have to, right? Because I'm only going to pick the winners. We're going to look at the beginning and the end. You could do great in the middle and then you know fall off in the last three weeks. So you have to do your beginning and your end. I always, always, always recommend doing before and after pictures. Absolutely. It's not required, but I highly recommend it. The men and women that I've seen do amazing. Another reason why we do this is usually every time we do this, we'll have two or three people that literally change their lives. And then we'll have 50 or 60 people that lose 10 or 15 pounds, which is great. That's amazing. That's awesome. But those two or three that really drop 30, 40, 50, this is the catalyst, the spark that helps them lose 100 pounds. If they don't have that before picture, man, they kick themselves right, right in the backside. So the requirements to win, you need the before, or the initial weigh-in, you need the final weigh-in. You do need to have a partner. We do have some people that have signed up without a partner. I'd gladly connect you with somebody. Again, you're gonna have to work with somebody you don't know, but that's okay. And there are some men and women that are just going to go solo. They just, they don't want to do it for the prizes. They just want to do it for everything else. Any questions so far? Jamie, do you know what kind of squats a procrastinator does? No. Deadly squats. That's why we don't procrastinate, right? So common themes I've seen from past winners. Work with your accountability partners, right? That's why we do it as a partner. That way you can have that person Put it as a reoccurring theme. Check in with my partner at 7.30 p.m. How was your day? Did you eat well? What time are you going to bed? Did you exercise today? The teams that win, they are on each other like white on rice. They don't let each other slap for six weeks, right? That is really, really big. The next part, whatever you're gonna choose for exercise, right? Roughly half of the men and women that are doing this challenge are not members. Make sure what you're choosing for exercise is fun and exciting to you, right? Because if Kim and I were partners and Kim's like, we're gonna go and we're gonna climb mountains and I can't stand climbing mountains, I'm not gonna do it. So make sure what you're choosing for your exercise is something that you enjoy and you look forward to, whether that be biking, swimming, if you do train here, training here, whatever you're doing, make sure that you enjoy it, right? Um, and then planning, that just goes without saying. You will not do well at this if you don't plan. That, that's just very, very basic things to understand. The nutrition part 
is going to be sent out to you guys today because I wanted to make this even more effective than we have in the past. So where I think we had room for improvement was in the past, we would say, okay guys, do the tray method. Sandy, did you like the tray method? No. No, right? So guess what? If I say do the tray method and Sandy says, I don't like it, that doesn't work for my lifestyle, how successful will Sandy be? Not very, right? Uh, Pam, you said intermittent fasting worked really well for you, right? <clears throat> Anybody here ever try intermittent fasting and say, I can't stand it, this stuff is insane? <laughs> no, well, we usually get somebody. But what I'm getting at is I'm gonna provide you a beginner level introduction to intermittent fasting. I did it this morning, it's done, it's already uploaded on YouTube. Beginner level introduction to tracking macros. Beginner level introduction to keto. Beginning level introduction to what we call the train method. That way you can watch them. They're gonna be like 10 minutes long, not like three hours. You can watch them and say, this works well for me. This works well for my lifestyle, right? In this room, I probably have students, to parents, to grandparents in some cases, retired, just starting their careers, and everything in between, right? So I can't say, Sandy, you have to do the train method because if it doesn't work for you, why would I want that? I want the highest success rate for everybody that's participating. So you'll get that and you can look at it, and then you also have it as a reference. So. You can save it, you can download it, you can put it as a favorite, and you can come back to it. So if you're like, ah, I forgot on tracking macros, you know, what should I do? Or what was his trick for, what, what was the name of the app that he recommended for intermittent fasting? You guys will have that right there. John, can you combine methods? Yes, okay. yep, you can. Now, with that, I would say, yes, you absolutely can. But don't, don't get crazy. Well, no, but like if you're intermittent fasting and you want to follow like keto when you can eat, you know what I mean? That's yep. what I'm saying. Like, Absolutely. Okay. Honest answer? No. I, when I go somewhere and I talk to somebody that's a subject matter expert, the first words I say are, what do you do? What do you do? Right? So what I do, intermittent fasting with the best food choices I can with rough macros. Right? So what that means in a nutshell as I eat in about an eight to six hour window, right? The other 16 to 18, 20 hours, I don't eat. When I do eat, I follow a rough template of I make sure there's a protein source, I try to get in vegetables, and I look for complex carbohydrates, right? That's essentially like three different things rolled into one. If we are starting from square one, don't get worried about trying to combine them. Just pick one, right? Watch the videos and say, okay, Intermittent fasting seems like the simplest way, or this tray method seems very, very easy to understand. Work with that and hammer that. Build the consistency, build the foundation. So again, that's what I do, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna work great for Justin, right? right. So watch them, cherry pick them, say, hey, this works perfect for me to you know what I do on a daily basis. Um, so you'll get those. I thoroughly enjoy working in this area, right? So if you watch all the videos and you guys are at home watching this, like, I watched all the videos and I don't know what to do. There's too much information. I'm not sure what to do. I've got the paralysis by analysis. I'm not sure what to do. Message me, message me and I'll get you started and get you going in the right direction, right? So frequently asked questions, you know, how often should I work out? I would tell you, if you were to make priorities and say, okay, my priorities are going to be, number one, sleep. I'm telling you right now, that is the most underestimated factor when it comes to reduction of body fat, maintaining muscle, mental clarity, energy, and all of these things. Focus on your sleep. When you get these videos from me, you're going to notice that there's going to be a rhythm. It's going to go a day about nutrition, a day about sleep, a day about exercise, a day about mindset. That sleep is massively important. I'll tell you right now, if you came in, if Kim came in and said, John, I just won the Powerball lottery. I have money is of no question. I'm writing a blank check. In six months, this is what I want. Boom, boom, here's what I want to do. I would come to your house and I would tuck you into bed <laughs> at like 9, 9.30, right? People would be like, oh, he's gonna, he's gonna make me train for six hours a day. I'll be running hills and doing all. No, I'd find a, I would find a style of exercise that you like. Great, you enjoy dancing, great. I would drive by, make sure you're dancing, right? Make sure you're exercising. But I would hammer you, hammer you, hammer you with your sleep, with your sleep.
because so many men and women don't understand. They don't draw the connection. They've never been taught. They've never shown the connection to a good night's sleep, reduction of body fat, and all the other things it ties into. It's like a superpower. It's really, really crazy. If you start geeking out and understanding how massively important your sleep is, it's, it's literally uh, life changing. So, the priorities sleep, nutrition, and then exercise. We're still good, Pam. We yep. It hasn't gone You're off going. yet. Perfect. Right? So, on the nutrition piece, don't aim for perfection. Do not aim for perfection. Perfection does not exist. Aiming for perfection is the fastest way to have two to three really great days and one okay day and then quit, right? That's not the name of the game. I'll emphasize again, success for me is I bump into you five years from now, 10 years from now, and you tell me, John, that video on intermittent fasting, the, the amount of times you told me how important sleep was really rang home and I've really paid attention to my sleep for the last five years. That to me is success. So again, we talk about sleep, coming on the nutrition piece. You're not trying to eliminate everything from your life for the rest of your life. It's not the case whatsoever, <laughs> right? But we do need to understand and draw the conclusion that if we don't change, you know, we're, we're currently consuming too much sugar, currently consuming you know, copious amounts of alcohol, that's not going to help, right? We've gotta draw that back. If you can take any of these programs that I walk you through, whether it be intermittent fasting, whether it be keto, whether it be macros, train method, if you can hit that 90% of the time, you'll be doing great. You'll be, you'll be phenomenal, you'll be doing amazing. Where a lot of men and women get messed up is they want it to be perfect, right? Especially when you go into macros, right? Because people with macros, you get really into the numbers and be like, ah, oh, I messed up my macros and then they throw it out the day, right? I'll tell you. Six last, last time we did one of these, I did the math. Like a six week block of time and an average life expectancy of 75 to 80 years, a six week block of time is nothing. It's nothing. So what I'm trying to drive home is take these six weeks and let that bleed into habits and routines that you have for six years, 16 years, 30 years. I say it all the time. You guys that have known me for 10 years now, I've looked pretty much the same because I have predictable habits and routines, right? If you do Facebook stalk me, you don't see like massive ups and downs and crazy swings, right? In 10 years, I've probably gained or lost, you know, seven pounds up or seven pounds down, but it's stayed very, very consistent because I have predictable habits and routines. So my goal is to help you build predictable habits and routines with, and it just dawned on me last night, I was thinking about this presentation. Sandy, they still teach what they call like life skills in school. Is there something for that? Yeah, I think I remember something called life skills. It's like, these are life skills for your health. These are life skills for your health. As, as, as much as we like to like obsess over crazy things like cars and golf and sports, there's nothing wrong with that. Like I love crazy cars, I love high-end cars, I think this stuff is amazing. But for me, I want to be well-versed in my health. I want to be a subject matter expert in the things that allow me to look and feel good and feel good about myself and again, be a role model to, to my, my son and the community at large, right? So that turns into habits and routines. I got off on a tangent, um, which I do sometimes. So about this, we'll open up for a question because I need a sip of coffee, anything. So John, I have a question about habits. So the old wives tale says that if you do something 21 times, it becomes a habit. Is that still true or is that literally just an old wives tale? I think putting a hard number to it, like 21, like here I go, 21, boom, <laughs> right, now I've been doing right. it for 30 years. Right. I think, I think you can't put a number to it like that. There is, you do need repetitions. Right. You have to do it again and again and again and again and again. And for those of you that like reading, I'll probably recommend like 100 <laughs> books over the course of the six weeks. Jamie, what book did you just pick up that would talk about habits? What's it called? It's the Tiny Habits. Tiny Habits. Right? Tiny Habits that Change Your Life. It's yeah. great. And what it talks about, is in order to get repetitions in, you have to make it small to start, right? You have to make it small, almost laughably easy to start to build a habit. Because if, if you were trying to build a habit of, okay, I wanna do push-ups every day, and Sandy's like, all right, I'm gonna do 25 push-ups a day, and it's like a max effort thing for Sandy to do 25 push-ups, day one, she's gonna do 25. Day two, she might do 25. By day three, no way, not happening. 
It never becomes a lifelong habit or routine because it was too difficult to start. If we said, Sandy, could you do one push up a day? Yeah, shit, yeah, I guess. Come here, I'd probably do 10 a day, 15, 20 a day, right? But if I said, laughably easy, do one a day, but make sure you just do it consistently, like 98, 99, like try your best not to miss any days. That becomes a habit and routine, right? How many of us here brush our teeth? Right. If you don't, put your hand up so you don't get embarrassed. Okay. <laughs> Could you imagine if when you were learning to brush your teeth, if your parents were like, all right, John, little John, here you go. This is how you brush your teeth. You have to climb that tree that's like 13 feet high and fight an eagle to get your toothbrush. You wouldn't do it. You'd never, it would never become a habit because it was so difficult to do. No, when we were children, your parents probably helped you a little bit, probably put a little bit of toothpaste on there and probably helped you a little bit and made sure you did it frequently enough so as an adult, it's stuck as a habit and a routine, right? So when you're thinking of these things, again, I'm gonna disagree and say 21 is just a, uh, an arbitrary number that they threw out there, right? I do agree that repetitions build it. Repetitions right. build everything. So if you, during this time, you're trying to build new routines and new habits, say, how can I make this small? How can I make it tiny? And then over time, you add to it, right? Over time, you make it more difficult you add layers to it. So that, that is a great question. I heard a question from, from this side, I thought. What's macros? Macros, right? I did. So macros, awesome question. With everything we eat, they're generally gonna fall into three categories. Macronutrients, protein, fat, and carbohydrate, right? So easy, easy example. If you were gonna eat throughout the day and you had all carbohydrate all day long. Breakfast was Eggo waffles with syrup, carbohydrate on carbohydrate. Lunch was endless, endless riggies at Bella Regina, and dinner was Texas toast with tater tots in between. Right? <laughs> you have really poor macronutrient ratios. You're almost 100% carbohydrate. And in fact, you know, another, uh, let's think about it, another, flip that on its head. Something that you've probably heard of, you know, Atkins diet, keto. Those are very uh, unbalanced macronutrient nutrition plans. So if you've heard of keto, or let's use Atkins diet, right? Very, very high fat, which it can serve a purpose. And I'll give you my honest opinion in the, in the videos on keto, um, and I'll give it to you right now. It's a great spark. It doesn't, I very seldom, if ever, have seen anybody do it for years on that. It's a great catalyst, it's a great spark, it's a great kick in the ass if you need it but you better have a backup plan after that because we've, I've seen it time and time again. Boom, through the roof results in keto, and then I don't know what to do when I don't wanna eat anything but straight fat for the next six years of my life. And right back, God, that's the benefit, you know, we were chatting. The benefit of doing anything for 10 years is you learn a lot, you, you learn. If you do it the same thing for 10 years, you're gonna learn along the way. Keto is a perfect example. I know this, you were at, it's about macros, but we'll touch on keto. Um, if we had a campfire right now, right? If we had a campfire burning, and it's just, it's, it's small burning, it's not doing all that great, but I have a can of gasoline, and I throw some gasoline in the fire, it burns really, really hot, really, really fast, but it's not sustainable. I've gotta keep throwing gas on it, it burns hot and fast, and it falters out. So keto is a great way to expedite and get things started, but if you don't have some, some wood to throw on the fire to make it last as long as you want it to, you're probably gonna have no fire again. That's why men and women are like, oh, I, we hear it all the time. I did keto and I did great. And then what happened? I didn't really have a backup plan. I didn't have anything after that. So you can use keto, and that'll be one of the videos, as a catalyst, as a spark, as, as gasoline on the fire. But for a long term, it's probably like the 10th time I said it, I want you to be successful long term, right? You've got to have something that you can do consistently for years on end. Years on end. And that could be intermittent fasting. That could be just understanding your macros, right? Having, going back to the original question, just having a more balanced approach, right? So my meals, they're generally a protein source. There's generally some vegetable and there's generally some complex carbohydrate. That's just breaking down my macronutrients, right? So great question. And I know I talk about this stuff like everybody in the room knows macro keto and I throw these terms out loosely. But that'd be one of the beautiful things about the video is that you can watch and maybe you know a ton about intermittent fasting. John, I've been doing it for and I love it, but you don't know anything about macros. You can listen to me chat about 10 minutes for macros and you can learn, right? That's the amazing thing, right? We should constantly be trying to learn, constantly trying to learn. What questions do we have so far? Anything? I was just gonna talk about 
tone that yep. my fitness pal will do the math books for you and like keep track of them and stuff like that. When I'm yep. that and something that I'm going to do with this one that's different from ones in the past is I'm going to basically say this is the the person that I think would do really well with macros, right? So if you are very analytical, if you love numbers, if you're like, I, I just geek out on numbers, tracking macros in my fitness pal works great if you like doing that stuff. Some people do. They're like, the highlight of the day is like, oh, look, Jennifer, my wife, my amazing wife, she loves it. She's like, look, I hit my macros. I'm within a couple grams. I'm like, I don't give a flying shit about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy that she did really well, but I don't track my macros. I don't do that. I love intermittent fasting. It works well for me. So two very healthy individuals following different plans, but both being successful, right? So you and your partner don't have to do the same thing. So if Sandy says, I, I couldn't stand the train method. I thought that was the dumbest thing I ever heard of. I'm gonna do macros and her partner says, I wanna do the tray method. Great, and the tray method is just like it sounds. We use a, a three compartment tray and we make it very easy. In this compartment, put in this style of food, vegetables, right? So I'll break all of that down to you guys. Um, consistency is king. Consistency is king. You just heard about building habits and routines. Don't get discouraged, right? The four things, well, that's five. <laughs> the four things that we're gonna, you're gonna hear me chatting about a lot, obviously nutrition, Sleep, I've already hit you on the head on sleep a lot. Exercise, and then mindset. So this is another one that I use very, very often. If you guys went out to your car right now and realized you had a flat tire, that's one out of the four. One out of the four is flat. You wouldn't get a knife and stab every other tire and go, well, now I'm really screwed. Now they're right. all flat, right? But for whatever reason, oh, I got a horrible night's sleep. So now I'm just gonna eat whatever's around I'm not gonna work out today, and I'm already in a bad mood. Can you see how one thing, right? Let's go back to sleep. Why sleep is so massively important. So your one tire is flat, aka you got a bad night's sleep. Does that mean you skip, skip your exercise? Does that mean you're gonna eat poorly and you're just gonna be in a bad mood the whole rest of the day? Don't, don't do that. That's the, the same exact example of just stabbing all your tires, right? In a realistic scenario, you say, oh, I gotta have a flat tire. I, maybe I can change it, I can put a spare, or I can limp it down to the gas station and, and, and fill it up you're still going to drive forward and make success out of your day, right? So don't let, because here's the thing, you're not gonna take six weeks and hit every single one and make every day for six weeks, my nutrition was good, my, that's, that's not gonna happen. It won't happen, it doesn't exist. But if you can say, okay, in the last, especially with how things have gone for the last three, four months, you know, coming up in five months, if you can say, all right, reflecting back upon the last three to four months, and how I'm conducting myself with nutrition, sleep, exercise, and mindset now, man, this is this is a night and day difference. You will feel better. You just there's no downside to it, no downside whatsoever. Uh, my job is to provide you with more content than you could ever want. My job is to answer your questions. Again, the best way to go about that is going to be the Facebook group, right? But again, if you have a question that you don't want to share in front of everybody that's in that group. You'll have my email multiple times. Those emails that are coming out, shoot, shoot, a, shoot a response. You know, I don't even think I don't even think you can do a reply all to that. I think you can just hit reply and it'll just come back directly to me. Shoot me a Facebook message. My phone number is all over the place. Right? Just don't call me after nine because I'm asleep. Um, but my job, I enjoy it. I really like what I get to do, is to help you guys be successful. So if you're stumbling, if you don't understand it. You know, I've worked with uh, several individuals in this room on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I thoroughly enjoy it. Nothing makes me happier than seeing somebody say, hey, I'm, I'm going in the right direction. Things are, things are firing on all cylinders. I mentally feel better. I physically feel better. And then think about it, right? If there's 100 men and women doing this challenge and 80 or 90% of them do really well, guess who else gets that effect? Their significant others their neighbors, their coworkers, the people that are around, their children, their grandchildren. If you are feeling better, if you're healthier, if you're sleeping better, if you're more energetic, everybody else gets that effect versus you're like, ah, oh, another week where I haven't worked out, I, I gained another three pounds, right? So coming back to why are you doing it? Maybe it's not even for you, maybe it's for the other 